Hello and welcome back to Les Douceurs de Boussy. Today I'd like us to get in the kitchen together to make a super soft airy loaf with a light golden crust. And filled with a tasty mixture. So there you have it. A delicious homemade filled bread that I'm proposing to you today. Before you start, don't forget to subscribe. It's easy. Tack subscription, tack notification, and you're in. You'll kill two birds with one stone by not missing out on a new release. And we're in the chain. Thanks. We'll proceed in three chapters, the first of which involves making the bread dough. For this dough, you'll need 500 grams of flour, 200 milliliters of liquid milk, and 60 milliliters of oil, in this case, olive oil, which we're going to use today instead of butter because it's healthier. But if you prefer butter, take 70 grams, 15 grams of baker's yeast, a teaspoonful of salt, 50 grams of sugar, 200 grams of powdered milk, and three. Eggs. Add a tablespoon of sugar to your milk and stir to dissolve. Next, warm the milk without heating it up completely, just barely, and add the yeast. The sugar will act as a nutrient for our yeast, helping it to swell and swell and swell, giving us a lovely, fluffy, airy crumb. Put your mixture in a warm place for 10 minutes, and while you're waiting, take your bowl of flour, add any aromatic herbs you like. I've just added rosemary, salt and powdered milk. Take your eggs and beat them lightly with a fork, then add the olive oil. This liquid mixture will merrily join the dry ingredients. Dry ingredients, start mixing gently. Add the rest of the sugar. And we find our yeast culture in the milk. Look at that, Mamma Mia. Our yeast has blossomed, risen and swollen, so we put half of it in our bowl and mix. Then we add the rest of our milk to the yeast. Of course, what follows can be done in the food processor, in which case use your dough hook, you know that beater that looks like an S or a hook. Continue mixing to obtain a fairly homogeneous mixture to incorporate all the powdered flour still lying around in the bottom of the bowl. Then I speed things up a bit and here we go, we go. It starts to stick to the gloves and I decide to get rid of the gloves and fight with my bare hands. Adopt this repetitive movement to get away with this sticky paste. So you pull, lower, turn, pull, lower, turn, pull, lower, turn. All in all, from the time you add the milk to the yeast to the end of the kneading process, it will take 10 minutes. And phew, the 10 minutes are up. We're off to remove the excess dough stuck to our fingers and hand. And take another bowl into which we'll put a tiny bit of oil, spread it all over the inside.
and transfer our dough to it. Cover it with plastic film. And keep the bowl warm for two hours. For the meat and four vegetable stuffing, you'll need 500 grams of minced meat, carrot, celery stick, white onion, half a red bell pepper to make it look pretty, salt, half a tablespoon of seasoning, pepper and a little garlic, two or three tablespoons of oil, a few leaves of parsley, and a grated cheese of your choice. We've washed all the vegetables and now we're going to remove the fibers from our celery stalks, like this. Then we dice our celery stalks and the three other vegetables, onion, carrot and red bell pepper, into tiny little cubes and cook them in a frying pan with hot oil. Preferably a large frying pan because we'll be stirring frequently. This is done over very high heat. Season with powder. Salt pepper. Pepper. Mix. A little parsley, we continue to cook our vegetables over a high heat and once they're cooked but not flattened, i.e. still crunchy, we remove them from the heat. Put the pan back on the heat with a tablespoon of oil and the minced meat. Ouch! Salt. and keep stirring over high heat half a seasoning tablet if you're so inclined so for the little story about the unrestricted tablet where I live at the moment it's cool and during that kind of weather tablets tend to harden so what I do is I put it in the pan it will heat up and once slightly hot, I could then just crush it with my skimmer. That's it, I don't think you give a damn, but... Let's go ahead and mix our tablet with all the meat, stir over high heat, and then add our multicolored vegetables. We won't lower the heat until the stuffing is cooked and we'll take the pan off the heat just 5 minutes after adding the vegetables. And neat, we've got our meat and vegetable stuffing and grated cheese for later. Mm -hmm. 
It's in this last part that we're going to shape our little steps and brown them with this mixture. Three tablespoons of milk and an egg yolk. And in the meantime, our dough, which was like this before the two hours, has become like this. Clean your work surface or lay out a baking mat and use a tiny bit of oil just to coat your surfaces a little and prevent the dough from sticking. Coat a large mold or baking dish with grease. Then flour it. And place it right next to you because that's where you'll be baking your rolls later. Now we're going to coat our work surface with a little oil. And pour in our dough, which miraculously is no longer sticky. Then we'll degas it a little. I assure you, this texture is too satisfying. We'd almost like to have fun with it, but enjoy it, degas it, press it a little, knead it. It's a really soft texture. Here's the texture we've got a bit of now. Look at that. It stretches, it stretches, it stretches the dough. We're going to cut it into several pieces, starting by forming a kind of sausage. We try to make them of different sizes. To the eye. For Form our first loaf. We'll shape the first dough into a small ball and then flatten it, but not too flat, so as not to tear the dough. A small pile of meat filling. A little cheese and the edges to form a papillote. Press everything together, turning a little to seal the opening. To seal the opening. That's it. We embellish the overall shape a little and place our first loaf in the oven dish. We do the same for the other seven loaves. Yes, because I made eight, but you can make them any size and any number you like. A little smaller, why not? And papillote. Now that we've finished, we cover our rolls again and leave them to warm up again, but this time for 30 minutes. They've grown again, touching each other a little, all of them. We take our mixture of milk and egg yolk and brush it onto each loaf. Now that we've finished, we place them in our oven, preheated to 180 degrees. Baking time will be around 25 to 30 minutes, but keep an eye on it from 20 minutes onwards. 
and don't open the oven before the first 15 minutes. After that, if you're a sensitive soul, don't, because it's a real treat. I assure you, this mellow cake will take your breath away. And that's where I'll leave you to enjoy it. We've gone on a bit long, it's true, but when you want to know everything from A to Z, you've got to take your time. See you guys. Ciao. Yeah, 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 yeah.